Hey there. Today, I'm going to tell you a tale of moonbeams and unicorn farts, otherwise known as the Saudi Aramco IPO. This one business deal is one of the most geopolitically important factors out there, and it may never happen. Today, I'm going to do what nobody else will and talk about this honestly. The Saudi Arabian oil company, popularly known as Aramco after an old name, is almost certainly the most valuable company in the world. Saudi Arabia is running out of money, so selling off a chunk of the state oil company is an entirely rational thing for them to do at this point. This whole IPO business, however, is just ridiculous. It's probably just a very long and convoluted way to take $75 billion from the Chinese. Today, for the first time in four years, I'm going to put on my corporate lawyer costume to explain why this is so ridiculous. Let's see if I can remember this. Nobody really knows how much Aramco is worth. Back when people believed in peak oil, folks would throw figures like $10 trillion around. Today, the best guesses seem to be between $1 and $2 trillion. The Aramco IPO is the reason why Saudi Arabia has been so willing to cut oil production. The higher the oil price is, the more money they can get for the 5% of the state oil company that they want to sell. An initial public offering, or IPO, is not what you use to sell a small slice of your state oil company. It's clear to me that some Saudi princes read a few too many articles on tech IPOs and thought the concept was sexy. <clears throat> Forget it. Founders and CEOs often do get a payday out of an IPO, but that's not the main point. The owners of the business uh, give up some of their control in return for a whole lot of money that they can use to grow the business. Neither of these things are true of the Aramco IPO. The Saudis are only selling 5% of the company, which means that they get to retain almost all of the control, and they're not even pretending that this money will be used to grow Saudi Aramco. It's supposed to save the country or something. Almost every month, Saudi Arabia pops up and announces a ginormous new project somewhere. There's Neom, the $500 billion city, and the unpriced but similarly massive Red Sea Taurus project that were announced last year. Over the past few weeks alone, they announced that they are building a $200 billion solar field with Japan's SoftBank and that they want to accelerate plans to build $80 billion worth of nuclear plants. The price tag for just those four projects alone would exceed Saudi Arabia's total amount of foreign currency reserves and the much less liquid public investment fund combined. Saudi Arabia does not have the money for a fraction of the projects that are being proposed, and let's be honest, they're not going to get a lot of foreign investment. Very little financial journalism is honest about these simple facts, and the few articles that actually mention this stuff just sort of gesture vaguely in the direction of the Aramco IPO and move on. This is despite the fact that the best estimates of the company's value now state that the IPO will likely only win Saudi Arabia another $75 billion. That amount of money barely makes a dent in the projects proposed over the past two weeks alone. For two years now, the Saudi government has been surrounded by tens of millions of dollars worth of Wall Street consultants telling them all kinds of fairy tales about New York and London listings and new respect and legitimacy for Saudi business. I suppose it's still just possible that a desperate post-Brexit city of London will lower its standards enough to do the IPO, but this was never likely. Saudi Aramco is, by all accounts, the best-run sector of the Saudi economy. In fact, it is most of the Saudi economy. But this doesn't mean that it will have all its bases covered for a public listing in the non-petrostate world with its emphasis on shareholder value. The levels of transparency required are never going to be okay with the Saudi government. Also, the Saudi government is very, very unlikely to change its treatment of the company. Saudi Aramco will always be a tool of government policy, both foreign and domestic, regardless of what the investors want. Investing in and with a petrostate like Russia is something that only the biggest and meanest oil companies can do. In Russia, low-level lawyers and business people get brutalized by the state. In Saudi Arabia, even the oligarchs get that treatment. Why would anybody without an air force want to put money into this? Once again, 
Maybe it would have worked in the peak oil days, but 5% of Aramco just isn't a good investment in 2018. I think reality is beginning to sink in. The Saudi government is now changing the laws to make it possible to sell the Aramco stake on their small local stock market. The IPO is unlikely to happen before 2019, and even if it does happen then, it is not going to bring in the fabulous sums of money promised by the international financial press. The local rich folks I expected to be forced to buy in a year ago have already had their money extorted away from them. The only likely buyer I can see is China for strategic reasons, and the United States won't like that at all. The Saudi Aramco IPO will not save Saudi Arabia. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you want to know why I'm looking forward to the fall of Saudi Arabia, I suggest you check out my essay, Everybody's Lying About Islam, available now on the Amazon Kindle and in paperback form.